Welcome back to another episode of Magic 3D Printing. In an earlier video, what I did was an unboxing of a printer, a Delta printer, uh, called the Artemis by a company called CMEC and C. Uh, if you remember, this was a printer that I purchased at uh, the Murph convention. Um, so we did the build. Uh, the build took about five to six hours. Uh, one of the things I commented on is because I was doing a build, I was going to mention any issues that I had. Well, I did have some issues. Um, the uh, number one, one of the, the problems was, is I'm really not familiar with deltas. Uh, at least when I started, I didn't know anything. I've learned a lot since then. Um, so issues included things like uh, some of the wiring that was supposed to have labels on it uh, did not have the labels. That sort of freaked me out initially because I, this was all new to me. But after doing a little examination, uh, I realized that it wasn't that a bit big of an issue. So I went ahead and labeled the wires myself. Um, also in the step-by-step -step instructions that are online, uh, there's a step 46 that shows a picture of the, uh, the bottom of the printer, the, the heat bed underneath, uh, shows a couple of white wires and one of the things it didn't indicate is one of those white wires that I was looking all over the place for uh, was not already attached at that point. It was, in a, it was in a cardboard box laying by itself. So that's something that they have to, uh, they have to correct. But otherwise, the online build documentation is absolutely fabulous. Uh, it, full photographs, multiple photographs for most of the steps, takes you through step by step by step of exactly how to build this thing. Um, once it was built, uh, there was an issue. Uh, I could not get a good first layer. It was really close. Uh, I ran the auto calibrations. Uh, auto calibration numbers were amazing, uh, and they still are. Uh, down to about 0 0.014 millimeters, which is well under the thickness of a human hair. Um, the, uh, the real issue was is uh, these printers use what's called FSRs, or force sensing resistors. Uh, there's three in the base underneath, or next to each of the columns under the heating bed. And they were triggering, but apparently there was something that wasn't quite right. Um, so uh, I did a lot of reading. I've learned a lot about Delta since then. Um, but after I and, I and I got a lot of feedback from the user community. Uh, so I worked on the printer for four or five days, um, tried a lot of things, provided a lot of feedback. Um, and after that uh, period of time, uh, I actually was contacted by the owner of a CMC and C. Um, he basically said, you know, you've you've done enough. You've, you've tried the proper things. Obviously, there is some sort of a slight issue uh, with the printer. Um, since you just bought it, we're not going to ask you to continue to troubleshoot the printer. And what uh, they offered to do was to build me another printer at the factory, complete, uh, and ship it to me as a replacement. Um, that's amazing uh, because they basically charge about $1,000 more to pre-build, to test, uh, to crate this thing up in a great big 120-pound uh, crate and ship it, uh, you know, and have it trucked essentially across country. Um, so uh, they did that. The new printer came in. Um, uh, you can probably hear it, maybe hear it slightly uh, printing in the background. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, but these folks uh, just floored me. They are so committed to quality. Uh, I've never seen another company like it. Uh, not only are they committed to quality, but they're committed to the point that they're constantly reading the forums and getting input from users. Uh, there was one guy who said, you know, hey, the, the towers on the printer weren't exactly 100% square. And even though that, that has no effect because it's off so slightly, uh, the quality of the print, um, they're actually investigating how many foot pounds are used to attach the bolts. And I mean, uh, I've talked extensively with the owner, and uh, every time we talk, he's, he's talking about the, the things that are on his mind as far as, you know, improvements and changes and upgrades, and uh, it, so that was really, really uh, impressive. Um, so anyhow, so w with that said, let's take a look at the printer that they shipped me. Okay, guys, so this is the, the CME CNC uh, Artemis printer that they uh, shipped to me. Um, 
as soon as I got it uh, right out of the box, I did a quick calibration and it printed like a million dollars. Gorgeous, perfect first layer. Um, you can see the labeling that they've done here. There's an off-on switch at the top. Uh, they put they actually cut into the base and actually put the Artemis name here. The uh, the bed, if you can can see that, actually has the C me C and C logo across it with some obviously with some warnings about heat. Um, the uh, the filament holder actually is part of the printer itself. It actually flips down uh, in place and locks. Uh, you also notice that they're using the uh, the Easy R extruder uh, extruder mechanism, which I'm really really happy with. Uh, definitely considering buying a, another one of these for my CR10s. Um, the the unit is powered by a uh, a um, excuse me a Duet Wi-Fi motherboard, uh, which really blows me away compared to what I'm accustomed to, which is using a Raspberry Pi with OctoPrint. So uh, all in all, it's it's an amazing printer. The, the FSRs that I mentioned are, are under the glass plate at the bottom of each of the three towers. Um, right now, as you can see, I'm actually printing, and you can see how quiet it is. Uh, this particular printer, unlike my CR10s or my ANET, I actually have to come down to this lower level to see if it's actually still printing, because it just doesn't generate much sound. Um, so that's pretty much it. The, uh, the, the printer is working great out of the box, no issues at all. So let's take a look at the interface to the uh, Duet Wi-Fi motherboard. Okay, guys. So this is the uh, the interface, uh, the Wi-Fi interface for the uh, Duet Wi-Fi uh, motherboard on this printer for the Artemis. As you can see, it gives you some of your standard features. Uh, I thought this was going to be very much like the um, Raspberry Pi interface. Uh, you can add a camera to the interface but uh, this has much much more uh, information uh, a lot of your um, calibrations and stuff can be done from this uh, from this pull down um, so we're in the machine control tab right now uh, you can also do basic extrusions of how many millimeters you want to do uh, you know how fast you want to extrude uh, it also has a safety protection built in so this will not light up unless the, uh, the hot end is at a specific temperature. Uh, here you have a print status, and when you have something actually uh, printing, it'll give you a percent complete. It will do some uh, approximations down here as to about how much time is left uh, based on filament usage, file progress, and your layer timing. Um, It'll also let you do baby stepping, which is really nice in case uh, you, it needs to be adjusted just slightly. Uh, I did that originally when I did my first calibrations, but have not uh, used it since. Um, the next is the uh, G-Code console here. Uh, this will actually show you basically uh, um, the status of your print job as far as, uh, you know, it's what you're printing. Um, has some very handy information. It also show you, like when you calibrate the uh, what the, uh, the what the level was, what the readings were actually were, which is very handy. Uh, as far as actual print files, you have this G code uh, interface here. Uh, you have the option of uh, uploading files and of course uh, generating new directories. So this is really nice. Uh, very simple to use. Uh, you just click and it will bring you into a uh, a browser to go out and select your files. Um, then under macros, this, this, is, this is really nice. This is a capability of going in and actually generating G-code macros. Uh, they've already done some cool stuff like you can actually automatically load and unload your filament uh, during your initial setup. Uh, there is a first probe that will actually do your calibration. Uh, some standard preheats for PLA and ABS. Uh, another uh, ability to uh, auto level and uh, to unlock your steppers, but this is uh, this is something that you can you know you can make new uh, uh, macros right over here. Uh, you can upload uh, macros that you've written uh, offline to, to this button. Um, the filaments um, it basically has some actual default filament settings if you want to load those up, and then under settings, uh, this is actually quite interesting. Um, it gives you the status of your uh, firmware, 
Uh, you also have the ability here to upload and, uh, new versions of the firmware. Um, and just lots of really generally good information. Uh, I'm still learning this interface, um, but uh, it really, really uh, is, is far superior to what I'm used to on the Raspberry Pi. Something else I wanted to point out in this uh, settings tab over here that we're, uh, that we're under right now, you have these additional tabs across here uh, that you can use. Like this is the user interface, uh, gives again, a, just a, a great amount of information about uh, the status of things, what fans are active. Um, uh, just uh, uh, like I said, I'm still learning this, but uh, um, just a, a tool change information. Um, under here, uh, this is uh, something I have not used, to be honest with you. I just wanted to sort of step through some of these, uh, some of these tabs. Um, here's a system editor. So if you want to go into one of your uh, files that, you, that get automatically used by the system, you can actually go in here, double click, uh, edit the file, and then uh, save your changes off. Uh, that's very, very handy. Um, so you don't really end up stepping out of the environment, uh, pulling the SD card and manually editing a lot of the, uh, the system files. Uh, the machine property tabs here. And then lastly, there's a tools tab. And again, this uh, gets into associated heaters and drivers. Uh, you can add additional tools here. Uh, just, a, just a remarkable interface uh, when you're used to just using uh, Octoprint. So, uh, all right. Okay guys, so I, I printed a couple of pieces here that um, I wanted to really try a couple of things, different filaments to see how well the, uh, the Artemis printed. So this first piece that I've got here is a Celtic Skull by uh, Artech 3D on Thingiverse. Uh, this was printed with Simplify 3D and it was, I used a profile that was uh, provided by Jim Carter, who is uh, in the CBCNC uh, printer community. Um, the only issue I had with this, I mean, the layer lines look great. Uh, as you can see, typically you get a, a really pronounced circular pattern on something like this. Came out beautiful. Um, the only issue I had was is that the uh, skull was not laying perfectly flat on the bed, and so uh, the bottom was a little, uh, a little rough. But uh, generally speaking, uh, the skull came out really nice. Very nice detail. All of the, uh, the bits and pieces, the designs, everything came out uh, very, very nicely. So uh, this, was, um, this was printed in uh, the Amaze 3D filament uh, at a 0.1 layer height. Um, I also did it at 40 millimeters a second because I had a lot of detail that I wanted to capture. Um, interestingly enough, the estimated time to print this skull was 9 hours and 15 minutes. The actual time to print it was 9 hours and 9 minutes. Uh, that is not what I'm used to. I'm used to 20 to 30 percent over on my, uh, on my prints, like on my CR10s for instance, or my ANET. Um, so that was, uh, that was really interesting to find out that I'm actually getting very accurate print times. Um, so the next piece that we did is the Thanos piece. Let me adjust my camera here a little bit. There we go. Um, this is a monster piece. Uh, this is uh, 300 millimeters tall. Um, was um, produced by uh, Bayamba on Thingiverse. Uh, again, I uh, printed this using uh, Simplify 3D with the same profile by Jim. Um, this was uh, 40 millimeters a second again because of the detailing and a 0.1 layer height. Again, very, very nice uh, detailing. Uh, everything came out super crisp. Um, the um, estimate on this was 107 hours and 21 minutes. The actual print time was 106 hours and 44 minutes. So again, amazing. Uh, uh, I would have expected probably an additional 20 or 30 hours of print time with this piece. Um, and it just, it, it actually came out faster than the estimate. So, um, so that's it for now, guys. Uh, if you're looking for a great, fast uh, printer with uh, a great user's uh, community support,
uh, you really need to check out the guys over at uh, CMECNC. So thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for future cool videos that we put out. And we'll see you next time. Oh, ho, ho, it's my